Brazil, which is, you know, like everywhere, belongs to five or six families who control all the media. And the main one there is called TV Globo. They have radio, TV, and newspaper, and they basically have a monopoly of the TV areas. So popular culture and, the ac and, and people being informed by the news media is not a free press. It's, it's a terrible. It's like you only had Fox News here. And uh, they, they don't uh, present news. They make propaganda, which uh, enforce their, their interests. And Global always been uh, a TV that caters for the elites in Brazil. Not only in Brazil, but also international interests. Like Brazil found huge reserves of oil. And now all these oil companies are interested in, in, in getting the cake. Uh, I think when you talk about the intervention of the United States, the United States represents the interests of corporations. So, Choose. yeah, I believe that there is it's not clear, it's not the United States the government has not recognized yeah. this legitimate government yet. But uh, behind, you know, under the table, I think that there is. Uh, now, is, is uh, Lulu's political party the Workers' Party? Yes. Okay, and, when, and he had two terms, and then... He, he, uh, after the, the uh, I'm sorry, the dictatorship ended in 88, there was like four or five different parties in power, and one worse than the other. They privatized a lot of uh, big businesses in Brazil, like uh, steel, and telecommunications. And when Lula finally was able to be elected, uh, he started with a series of social programs which took millions of people out of utter misery, hunger. He, end, he was able to end hunger in Brazil. He was able to pay off the uh, International Monetary Fund, which was, we, we, before him, we only paid the interest of the debt. He actually paid back? He paid them all and took the IMF out of Brazil. And these people are now bringing the IMF back with all the backwards policies that they themselves already said that don't work. But they, they want to bring them back to Brazil. So talk about the president. The president, he was chosen, I think, because... No, the, 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 the president that just got removed from office. And Dilma, Dilma, Dilma was elected for the second time uh, in 2015. Re-elected in 2015 by more than half of the voters in Brazil, like 100 million people voting, and she got 54 million the other guy got like 48 something, so she clearly won the election. But the people who lost, they never, they were never conformed, they were never satisfied with the results, and they tried to to derail her from the beginning. Different actions, legal actions, and all that. And then uh, the main news network start also bombarding with, with uh, propaganda, and at the time that the economy in the country finally sunk, uh, they took advantage to remove her in an impeachment process, which is completely fake. So the Congress removed the president, who had been elected by over 50 million yes. people, and had been a clear winner in the election. Yes. And so she was removed against the will of the Brazilian people. More or less because, you know, the yeah, there were like huge demonstrations after that happened. But the Brazilian people were like under the illusion that she did something wrong because of the main media there uh, kind of put this in, in people's minds that Dilma is guilty of something, even though they could never prove that... They never proved that any charges of corruption personally oh, okay. against her, did She has a clean slate. She can be elected again. Yeah. The president right now, if there was an election, he could not be a candidate for at least eight years. Yeah. As if uh, she I, can run I want to talk power. just a little bit, and, and who, the person who best can answer the question. The, what we learn here... It's just a corrupt, everyone's taking money, everyone's corrupt in the, in, the, in the Workers' Party, everyone's corrupt, corrupt, corrupt. And that's why these corrupt politicians 
removed another corrupt politician. That's what we hear. Yeah. So can someone explain corruption, the Workers' Party, and who these people were that removed them? Yes, uh, my name is Lydia. I, I am a retired professor of Brazilian and Latin American literature. I work at Yale and uh, in the Graduate Center CUNY. And now I am a writer, a <laughs> full-time writer. And I, I know that, uh, I don't know, no, I, I, I can uh, tell you that corruption in Brazil is, you know, is a theme that comes and goes. For example, we have a very traditional right-wing uh, party during the, until the 60s, more or less, uh, named the UDN, U, the Democratic Union of uh, Brazil, that defended this, uh, this um, flag mm. against corruption. And um, each time it, it appears, uh, the, the, the result is to what did I say? Um, to the delusion of the people about you know they are after these campaigns, these huge campaigns, they start not believe in politician anymore. It's a kind of uh, provoke alienation because everything is corrupted. The politics is a dirty thing. It's better not to. To uh, uh, get be involved, get involved with this, and in this time, I think is it was like that. They started with PT, and um, the president, the last one, is a woman, and a very you know. Wasn't she a hero? Hadn't she been a, a, she under the because she was the only one that really didn't uh, was involved in, in, in any corruption, and she decided that she will yes, you want to to uh, investigate corruption. I I will do this. I will help you to do this. When they start arriving at the the, the parliament, the parliamentary uh, mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. They decided to do a cope against him because they are they are you know treating him them all of them and this is the that uh, differ, differentiates this coup from the 1965 coup because at that time it was a military dicta uh, dictatorship and now we have this soft coup you know this is a what did the military do when this coup took place did they support it. No, uh, military is not uh, uh, involved in this. Conflict. On neither side? No, no. Not yet. Not yet. But the same thing happened in 1964. When they started, they deposed Jean Goulart, who was the president. And then five years later, the military was fully involved. All individual rights had been revoked to IEC group. And what we feel is that they are on the path to doing the same thing. And the military responds to this government. So the moment that they are in power, what they say, the military must obey. Now, when you mention the military, it's also important to understand that this is about Brazilian oil and about Brazilian water. Okay? Why is it about Brazilian water? If you, Brazil has the fresh, one of the largest fresh waters. Supply of the world. Really? Okay? And it's not even and the Amazon. The Amazon. Not no. the Amazon. No, and you have the Amazon. And the Amazon. <laughs> so, for you to understand the situation, you understand that the day after Gilma was removed, the United States donated seven tanks to Brazil. Seven absolute tanks. And they are now sitting on the border with Argentina and Uruguay and Paraguay, which is right where such gathers or Itaipu, which is the big dam, can happen. They are controlling the, 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 the water, you know, from the Rio da Prata comes with the Well, is the water privatized? No. No. no but but not yet. <laughs> it's been privatized already. The Macri in Argentina already signed deals with Nestle. Really? And he's selling out and it's the same water. So if Argentina owns the right to water to a private company, you understand why the state's coming in because this is all going to be split. 
When did Argentina sign this agreement with Nestle? This is in the last three months. I don't know the yeah. exact date, but yeah. I want to say like July. Yeah. Have you heard about this, Marcello? Yeah, yeah. This, uh, this is the, the biggest aquifer, aquifer in the Guarani, world. Guarani. It's called the Guarani Aquifer. You can check that out. It's an underwater uh, water reserve, under, underground water reserve, which can, they say they can provide water for Brazil alone for 200 years. So uh, we know very well that water is going to be uh, the reason for many wars. And these companies like Nestle and Coca-Cola, they are very interested in that. Okay. Um, that role that played in what's going on. Let's, let's on. bring it back to the reason we're all here tonight. We're here because the movie Aquarius, which has been picked up by a distributor in the United States, so it will be people will be able to see it hopefully soon um, and it's interesting that Aquarius is not about it's about class but it's not about poor people it's about a woman who's what upper middle class uh, bourgeois yes, yeah. yes, yes, who um, doesn't want to move out of her apartment and every, je, it, ladies and gentlemen gentrification is a worldwide phenomenon it's just not them trying to evict me from my apartment <laughs> yeah, you know right <laughs> So, but but it's a very interesting story of um, how they the, the 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 landlord, the real estate people, first tried to sweet talk her, buy her out, and she's just stubborn. She doesn't. She's right. She doesn't want to move. Did that resonate anything with either of you um, about what you know what's going on in Brazil today? Yes. For example, uh, the beginning of the movie is a family party. In Brazil, this is very important. Everything is around families. And the family appears at, at, at the middle of the, of the movie when uh, the, the main character, who he is a retired journalist, is looking for a journalist who is still working in the same uh, newspaper she used to work to help her with the situation. And she discovers that this guy has connections, familiar connections, inside not only of the newspaper but also in the the constructors and the you know developers. Yes. And this is this is the problem in Brazil all the time. You have actually where a oligar oligarchy no. and uh, this controls of all the, the the country is unbelievable because for example. All these newspapers in Brazil are doing consistently uh, uh, campaigning against Dilma, against PT, because you know this. I think this is this is the relationship between the movie and the situation. Well, this, this is a guess. About communications, there's one other element that's important to say. In Brazil, there's about five families that hold all the media in Brazil. When Dilma and Lula took office, just like Italy. Just like it, but when Gilma took office about two years ago, when she, she before she got elected for the second time, she bought satellite antennas for all the Northeastern family, and she started the Brazilian Network Television. And that, oh and instead of advertising oh for Global, yeah. the, you know, she invested in other options, which is public television. Is when, that still you know, operative? Uh, not so much anymore. Right now, they're trying to make that uh, an arm of the right-wing government. And what's also interesting about that, what's also interesting about that, is that right after she got removed, uh, the idea is that she was removed because Brazil was broke, and she broke Brazil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that and true? Right, it's not true. And there's data. We can give it to you. I can give you websites for that. But what happens is, immediately after that happened, this president already raised the salaries of the judges that determined on her fate over 50%. She had bargained. All the Congress, so they bought the judges? No, but not only the judges. As a matter of fact, last night, he held a feast for 400 of the senators and representatives because today they were voting to freeze all the social benefits to the poor Brazilians. Well, won't there, won't there be a mass outbreak of anger and... Uh... But people only hear what Globo tells them. If you talk to some people here that know who Sonia Braga is, 
and they only watch Global because there's plenty of Brazilians yeah. who are immigrants living in New York that come and because they miss home and they can't go back, they buy Global Television okay. over cable. Okay. They only watch Global. Yeah. That's what they see. They see a corrupt president. Mm. They see poor people taking advantage of the system. They don't see... That's, that's a common sort of attitude about poor people universally taking when there's when there's a, a, uh, a government that is trying to help poor people that they take advantage what do they actually mean can, uh, can you flesh that out a little bit what is the accusation that they're taking advantage the, the one thing that Brazil did uh, when Lula took office and you can probably talk more about this they created Bolsa Familia which is actually something they even Bloomberg tried to implement here which basically they paid a stipend for the families to take their kids to the doctor, for the kids to kids send the kids to school. So that mm -hmm. took children out of slave labor, and that made kids go to school. Mm -hmm. So you have, for instance, I lived in Brazil the last in 2003. I had someone helping me take care of my children. Mm -hmm. Her children would never have gone to the university, mm -hmm. and her daughters are all right now at the university, mm -hmm. and that's because... Bolsa Familia helped these kids stay afloat. And the other thing is they created universities and opportunities like technical education for the poor people. Uh, Lula's commitment when he first took office was to have people have at least three meals a day. And right now, Brazil is out of the world hunger map because of this plan. It's a disaster. We are not taken to the streets because... We want to be loud politicians, or we don't have other things to do. We get accused often of getting paid in dollars and being oblivious to what's happening in Brazil. But it's quite the contrary. We see it, and we want to, to be able to secure help, because the disadvantaged people in Brazil are standing for a loss, and they don't even know this is coming. I just think that this is an exclusive problem of Brazil. Never. Media in general is controlled by right-wing people. Yeah, it's, it is here too. Look at here, the situation that the United States is in. We didn't have democracy yeah. now. Where would we get our news? Thank you, Dr. Goodman. Yes, yeah. The propaganda makes people uh, take actions against their own interests. They're able to convince people that a lie is happening. The, the theater is filling up, so I'm going to stop this fascinating conversation. I'm really happy to see you here, um, I, and I, I loved the movie, and I thought Sonia Braga was wonderful, and when she 